Hello and welcome to a brand new year in Innerstorm Games Presents, or ISGP, that's going to be called from now going forward. My name is Richard Cree, and this is my little web show that I have going on when I get the time to do it. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, just a hobby, so it's not a full-time job or anything. So for those of you who have subscribed or are hanging in with me, I really appreciate it. Uh, tell your friends if you enjoy it. But for now, let's see, we're here, New Year, 2014. That means it's time for another Top 100 Games. So how this whole thing started was with my Top 100. I'm a big fan of the Dice Tower, Tom Vassell's web series. And he made a challenge a couple years ago. And that's a challenge, but you know, he kind of said, if you got Top 100, do it. And I thought to myself, I do have a Top 100, so I'll do it. And so I shot my Top 100 games and had a lot of fun doing it. I want to keep doing some video series. So I've done some playthroughs of a couple of games. That seems to be what I'll keep doing for a while, although I may focus solely on the rules. The rules seem to be getting more views than the actual playthroughs themselves, so I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, if you'd rather just see the rules, and I can do some rule, a bunch of rules videos and crank those out as opposed to trying to do the playthroughs, or if you'd like to see playthroughs, let me know in the comments below, or email me, or Facebook me. You hit me on uh, BGG. At any rate, let's get to what we're all here for, my top 100 games of the year 2013, and let's start with number 100. Number 101, Bat One City. All right, let's kick it off with number 100, which is new to the list this year. It's Batman, the Gotham City strategy game by WizKids. Batman Gotham City is a really cool area placement game. It's pretty light to medium weight, but you're playing the villains in this one. You're not the heroes, you're the villains trying to control the blocks of Gotham City by sending out your henchmen to get you money or information or control certain number of blocks to help you level up. Now the cool thing about Batman, and you'll see this up on the screen, I'm going to put it up here, is that it actually comes with a Heroclix figure. So if you're into Heroclix, then this is a cool way to get like five new figures that come with uh, swap uh, optional bases that can swap out. So some of the bases are for the uh, Batman game and the others are for Hero Clicks. And the other thing that makes this game particularly fun for me is that you can interact with the villains, so you can fight each other for the space, but you can also send Batman out after the other villains. So if somebody's getting a little bit too powerful, send Batman after him. Another neat thing about the game are the action cards in the game where one card can help whoever draws it, so it might help you, it might help whoever owns that city block. Uh, but in the second part, you can either do that action, which could benefit you or hurt somebody else, or you can just trade in that card and get some resources for it, which in this case is cash or information. I think that's pretty nice. All in all, though, this very impressed uh, WizKids. I always kind of had a uh, eh, bad taste in my mouth. Uh, not sure why, I guess this is a little into the uh, hero click, the fact that it's collectible. I don't like collectible uh, card games or clickable items, I like to know what I'm buying when I buy it. But very impressed. Number 100, Batman Gotham City Strategy Game. N number 9, Snow Age. Number 99 on my list is one that I have enjoyed and been on my list for a long time. It's one of my favorite gateway games. And it's Stone Age by Real Grand Games. Stone Age is a worker placement game where you are living the Stone Age and sending your workers out to gather resources such as food, wood, brick, stone, or gold. And those resources have an increasing difficulty in getting them. You're rolling dice, and depending on the total number of your dice that you roll, depends on how many resources you get. And food is done in, uh, by twos, wood by threes, brick by fours, stone by five, gold by six. And so the more workers you send, the better chance you have at getting the resources you need. You can also gain more workers by going to the Love Hut of all places. You can get tools to help you with your dice rolls, or you can cult wheat in order to help feed your workers and not need as much food later on in the game. There are also cards you can get that have technological advances to help you with points near the end of the game. All in all, a great little package, one I really enjoy introducing people to, one I love playing myself. Number 99, Stone Age. Jamaica. Number 98 on my list this year is another one that was on my list last year. It was at number 60 last year, so it's dropped a bit, but it's still one that I enjoy playing. And that's Jamaica, the pirate racing game. 
in Jamaica, you'll be a pirate, and you'll be racing around the island of Jamaica, and the mechanic in it is you roll two dice and decide whether one's going to be a day action or a night action, and you'll play a card and utilize either the, uh, you have to use both actions, the day and the night, and so one may be, you have to move back three spaces, but then you get to move forward two spaces. Or maybe you can get food or gold or cannons to fight other pirates. You're trying to race, race all around the, the island to get back to Port, Port Royal, excuse me, and then depending on uh, who crosses Port Royal first, the placement of all the other players will then score points based on where they finished. Also, one of the other things is depending on uh, how you're doing, where you land around the island, there are places to either gather treasure to have those points at the end, uh, but you also get food. There'll be certain, uh, you see like two or three squares, little spaces, sometimes four. That's how much food you have to consume uh, for your crew in order to be in that space. You also have a hold that can only hold so many items. So as you're gaining all this food and all these cannons and all this gold and all this treasure, you do have to keep it in your hold. If you don't have enough room in your hold, you're going to have to let some go. All that, plus just the really fun uh, aspect of racing, is what makes Jamaica my number 98. Number 7, Team Larva. Larva. My number 97 game is one that was also on my list last year. It was at 63. It's dropped also. That's Key Largo, the game of deep sea diving by Titanic Games. Key Largo is just great fun. It's a game that uses action cards. You'll have a number of action cards you can choose from. And you'll go around the board, the island, to either visit the tavern and hire divers, or perhaps buy equipment for your divers. Maybe get some cash by going to visit the dolphins. Or hopefully going diving for treasure. That's where the big money is. The treasure is divided up into these little stacks of cards that are either shallow water or medium water or deep water. And depending on how far you can go down or how deep you go down or which one you can go in, depends on your diver and how weighted they are, or how many cards they, how many cards they can draw, depends on how weighted they are. But you have to be careful because these waters aren't always peaceful. There are monsters that look around the island, lurk, look, they look, they lurk, they lurk around the island and are just looking for tasty divers to swallow up. This is great, great family fun. Right after I say Masha swallow up the divers. It's great family fun. Uh, one I really recommend, highly recommend, and that is Key Largo. Number 96, Prima on Earth. One thing I did not mention at the beginning of the uh, video, which I'll go ahead and throw in now, is that these are all, my top 100, these are all fantastic games. I love them all. I have probably played about 700, 750 games in my lifetime. Uh, I won't say how old I am to so play that many games, but I have played a lot. And so if you think this is, what, the top 7th of all the games I've ever played. So these are all pretty good games, pretty good to excellent games. And in my opinion, they're ones that everyone should try playing at least once. Always try before you buy, as they say. Uh, I don't always adhere to that, uh, but I do try to do my research, which I also advise that you do. But with that out of the way, let's continue on with the list. Number 96. Number 96 is one that I actually did a demo for earlier. It was actually the first playthrough demo that we did from Flying Frog Productions. It's Conquest of Planet Earth. Conquest of Planet Earth is a great solo or cooperative or non-cooperative competitive play game in which you are an alien race trying to take over a 50s slash 60s um, sci-fi kind of universe. Uh, think a bad version of The Day the Earth Stood Still or some of those others. Um, Plan 9 from Outer Space is probably a little bit closer to the feel that you get out of this, but it's fantastic nonetheless. Uh, if you want to see more, go check out the demo that I did for it, uh, the playthrough. There's a rules video, there's a playthrough video, you can check out more. Uh, if you like what you see, then go pick it up. Conquest of Planet Earth. Uh, the expansion also just came out. This was probably not for a while, but I've just now seen it in stores recently. Apocalypse. So pick up this. If you like it, pick up the expansion. And enjoy what's number 96 on my list. And that is Conquest of Planet Earth. Number 99, Land Lighting. Number 95 is another new one to the list. Lots of new games on the list this year. Had a lot to play, had a, lot to play. had a chance to play a lot of new games. 
this year, and this one is a cooperative game. It's Atlantis Rising. Atlantis Rising is a worker placement cooperative game, so two of my favorite things there. I love worker placement games. And this one, though, it has, almost has a, uh, like a pressure luck type element, like even gold to it, where the island is constantly sinking. So as you're flipping over cards, you're going to be removing segments of the island or sinking segments of the island. And if your workers are caught on those segments that are sinking, then they're lost. That doesn't mean you can't get some back later in the game. There's always opportunities to get workers back. But different pieces of the island will be different at sinking at different rates. You'll also have a chance to earn powers and abilities to help you on your task. But that's not all. That's not the only danger because while your island is sinking, you're being attacked by invading raiders. I want to say they're Spartans. I don't remember off the top of my head. But all that makes for a pretty challenging cooperative game with a lot of cool elements to it. A very pretty board. That is Atlantis Rising from Z-Man Games, my number 95. And number 94, Violation. Number 94 is another one that was on my list last year. It's one that uh, I'm not normally big on uh, bidding games. I'm not very good at them. Uh, but this one is probably the, the best of the bunch in my opinion. That's Revolution by Steve Jackson Games. In Revolution, it's a blind bid process. Everyone's behind these very sturdy bidding screens, choosing who you're going to influence in the town to get your way using either gold to bribe them or perhaps blackmail uh, the preliminary sketches, as they said in Black Adder, uh, or just send out your thugs and, and use force to get your way. Those are the means at your disposal. Hopefully no one else is trying to get to the same people because if they outbid you, then they'll get what they need. Or if you guys cancel each other out, nobody gets what you need. And by doing that, though, you're placing cubes onto the, onto the board as workers to hold uh, resources. Whoever has the majority in a certain area at the end of the game gets those points, as well as any other points they accumulated during the course of the game through influencing people. A great game, one that everybody enjoys, and if you like take that that are kind of non-intentional, <laughs> you go, oh, I didn't know you played there, oops. Uh, Revolution is a great one, my number 94. Number 90, Clark the City. Number 93, I am a huge fan of Carcassonne. Well, I won't say huge. I'm a big fan of Carcassonne. And I enjoy playing, enjoy playing friends. I love to introduce people to play Carcassonne. It's a great gateway. I probably call it the king of gateway games because of how simple it is and all the variations there are out there to help take it from a gateway to a more complex game. But I did get to play one this year that was hands down the best Carcassonne version I've played to date. Uh, Carcassonne, the base game, was actually further down on my list. Didn't quite make the top 100, but this one did. And that's Carcassonne, the city. What makes Carcassonne the city so cool are the wooden pieces inside. So not only are you doing the, uh, the cities, or excuse me, not the cities, uh, the roads, like you are in normal Carcassonne. And places places cities actually have these uh, festivals, they're going to these fairs uh, going on that are like little grassy areas that you can control. Although they don't have to be completely enclosed, you can't block them off by adding uh, street areas or city areas, village areas. But what's cool is that they've added these walls that go around the city that help act as a uh, game ender. So when the city's walled off, and that's the end of the game, even if there's tiles left. But uh, the things you can do with the city are awesome because you can either put up a tower and gain points to the length of city walls between either the main gates or between towers. But you can also put a lookout on the wall. And that lookout can look across the board and any special buildings that he sees, you'll get points for that at the end of the game. But like a farmer in the original Carcassonne, once he's there, he's done for the game. You can't have him back. So knowing where to place him, but then being able to build on that and extend out how far he can see, unless someone else caps off the, the city on the other side. Really fun, really enjoyable. And that is my number 93, Carcassonne, the city. Number 92, the but, if you're not into cities, maybe you're more into farming, well, then is there a game for you? 
Z-Man Games, and Uwe Rosenberg's Agricola. Agricola is a lot of stuff. There's a lot going on in Agricola, from worker placement and the randomness of uh, what comes up when. Uh, you know it's going to come up at some point, but you don't know what point it's going to come up. Having to uh, plant crops, having to raise livestock, having to feed your family, expand your family, grow your family over the seasons. This is a lot of game, but it's also a lot of fun. There's uh, roles you can be, so you can be, uh, you know, what kind of farm are you? There's items you can purchase to help improve your farm. Again, a lot, a lot, a lot. But worth it. Very much worth it. Uh, a lot of people divide on this game. I'm on the side that, that does like it. That's why it's on my list at number 92, and that's Agricola. Number 91, Chicken Chai. All right, capping out today's list. Uh, for those of you who saw the list last year or who know me from around, you know that I am not a big fan of Settlers of Catan. I am, again, the Corbel at bidding and trading type games. However, there was Starship Catan, or excuse me, Starfarers of Catan, not Starship Catan, that's a completely different game. Starfarers of Catan, which was fantastic because what it did for me that regular Settlers of Catan did not do was to give you the opportunity to stay in the game. There are too many times in Settlers of Catan where I couldn't get the resources I needed early on in the game, I fell behind, I couldn't get caught up because nobody wanted to trade with me, even though I was like, the person you should trade with because there's nobody, I, there's no way I could catch up and win. Starfarers gave you that chance. They also had these cool rocket ships uh, where you could shake them and these beads would fall out. Uh, unfortunately, that's no longer in print. Uh, it's very expensive to buy online because it is uh, on near collector's item now, it feels like. However, uh, in Starfarers of Catan, was on my list last year. It just missed it uh, this year. But there is a Catan that did make it that bridges the gap between Settlers and Starfarers, and that's Star Trek Catan. So Star Trek Catan, it doesn't necessarily give you a guaranteed way uh, to stay in the game, like a guaranteed resource like Starfarers did, but there are cards in there that have uh, that are members of the Enterprise crew or members of the Star Trek universe that will give you a power, depending on uh, how you decide to play. There's like two sides to them, so you can use uh, either power. And uh, just the, the whole aspect of Star Trek Catan, the fact that it's star bases and Enterprises are the roads and Klingons are the thieves, it's, I mean, it's still Settlers of Catan. It's everything uh, bit for bit, but it's got those cards that are the, the uh, members of the Federation that just, those extra powers just kind of make it. It seems to be the way to go these days is give people extra powers and they, they love it. I know I do. And that's why I love Star Trek Catan, my number 91. So that wraps it up for this episode of my Top 100 Games list. I will hopefully try to have the next one out within a week or so. I don't have as much time as I used to have to work on these videos. Again, it's a, a part-time thing. My work hours changed and my daughters are growing up. Uh, Piper is getting into soccer and so she's got soccer practices during the week. But I will try and get these up as regularly or semi regularly as possible, and I will try, I promise, I promise I will try to do a better job of updating Facebook and the webpage and Twitter and all these other entities and social network places that can be uh, reached out to. In the meantime, you can like us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, you can check out the website, or you can uh, subscribe to the channel. Which is probably the best way. That seems to be the one that gets updated the most often. And you can reach me by all those methods. Uh, or just email me at rcree at Strong Games if you have anything you want to say. Any advice. Any comments. Leave them in the comment section below. Once again, I'm rambling. As always seems to happen at the end of these videos. We'll go ahead and sign off for now. And I'll see you back here in about a week or so. Thank you very much for watching.